In this video, I will be triggering fans of every NBA superstar. If you don't get mad at what I say, then you're not a true fan. Prepare your anuses. Giannis Antetokounmpo. Giannis would be working at Red Robin if he was six foot instead of seven foot. He has no skills and is only effective because he was born with freakish measurables and super athleticism. I get secondhand embarrassment from watching him fail miserably trying to shoot free throws and three pointers, AKA things that require actual skill. Sure, he won a ring last year after LeBron got hurt, AD got hurt, Kyrie got hurt, Harden got hurt, and Kawhi got hurt. He also missed two playoff games that his team won without him in the conference finals. Sounds like a real repeatable formula for success. In the end, Giannis is just a glorified version of Thon Maker. Chris Paul. CP3 is a tiny, fragile player with a serious Napoleon complex. He had a golden chance to silence a lot of his critics last year by winning a ring when he had a 2-0 lead in the finals, but instead he shit down his leg. State Farm doesn't cover that. CP3 is the poster boy for why the eye test is so important. If you just looked at his advanced stats, it could be argued he's the best point guard of all time, but we all know he's absolutely not. We have to listen to the media slurp him for his leadership constantly. You can set your watch to him getting hurt and his teams crashing and burning in the playoffs every year. Whether it's blowing a 3-2 lead versus San Antonio in 2008, a 3-1 lead versus Houston in 2015, a 3-2 lead versus Golden State in 2018, or a 2-0 lead versus Milwaukee last year. Also, the Cliff Paul commercials suck. James Harden. James Harden is an absolute fucking disgrace to the game of basketball. Ball. His entire effectiveness has always revolved around flailing into an opponent and twerking his body like an IG stripper to get to the foul line. On the rare occasions he isn't hunting for fouls, he slows the game to a halt by dribbling a bunch for no reason then settling for a step back three-pointer. He actually used to be fun to watch in his early days with OKC, but that was a lifetime ago. People might tolerate his dreadful style of play more if he actually had the titles to legitimize it, but Harden remains one of the biggest playoff chokers in sports history, both the eye test and the stats show this. Every single year he craps his pants when the lights shine brightest. He's amazing for fantasy basketball and regular season wins, but if you want to win titles, this bearded sack of shit is the last person you want on your team. Nikola Jokic. I love Nikola Jokic and think he's the perfect player. <laughs> Are his two very large brothers done watching now? I don't want them to kill me. Russell Westbrook. Russell Westbrook might be the single dumbest basketball player of all time. He's never once learned from any of his past mistakes, especially late in games where he just can't help but take an awful three-pointer. Westbrook has two things going for him, his athleticism and his motor. He never stops being aggressive on offense, and this can be fun for a little while until you realize opponents want him to take every single shot because he can't fucking shoot. Despite his freakish athleticism, he's not particularly particularly great at finishing around the rim either. He gets a lot of assists, but those are more than canceled out by his insane number of turnovers. He's a great offensive rebounder, but his overall rebound totals are heavily inflated by cherry-picked defensive rebounds. He single-handedly destroyed the value of the triple-double with his stat hunting, and his fans slash media believe that getting a triple-double automatically means you played great, even if you shot 35% and had 8 turnovers with it. Russ is also a terrible defender, and in the grand scheme of things, really adds nothing positive to a team. Is he a great player or does he just have the ball in his hands a lot to accumulate big stats? I lean towards the latter. Carmelo Anthony. If we're going strictly by play on the court, Carmelo hasn't been worthy of the star moniker since at least 2014. But despite his rapid decline, Carmelo still has a large and very loyal fan base, so I'm going to go after him here. I've already called him a top five most overrated player ever in one of my previous videos, and I stand by my theory that if his name was something bland and generic like Jeff Smith or Mike Brown, he wouldn't be nearly is popular. Even at his very best, Carmelo was a high volume, average efficiency scorer who provided negative value as a passer and defender. He was also terrible in the playoffs outside of a select few years, which is a large reason why he's never come close to winning anything. To his credit, he appears to have finally wised up and embraced his role as a sixth man, but he was never close to as good as his fans wanted him to be, and his style of play isn't conductive to winning. Damian Lillard. We have to hear how loyal Dame is every two fucking days because he stayed in Portland and it's insufferable. If Dame wants to stay on his hamster wheel where he doesn't come close to winning anything, that's his right. But please, nobody outside of Portland cares. Dame is a great regular season player and the RC Cole version of Steph Curry, right down to taking a bunch of 30 plus foot three pointers every game. Dame has somehow snagged the reputation as a clutch performer despite awful playoff numbers. He will live off of his two series winning shots versus 
versus Houston and OKC. And he was great in those two first round series and in 2021 versus Denver, but the rest of his playoff career is exceptionally bad. He's a terrible defender, and this has been a largely overlooked reason for why Portland has never gone far in the playoffs outside of 2019. Unless the NBA starts handing out championship trophies for not running from the grind, Dame will never win anything and be most remembered as a shitty SoundCloud rapper. Anthony Davis. Anthony Davis has a sick sexual satisfaction with the floor, which is why he flops and drops to the ground at least 10 times every game. He also has a fetish for going back to the locker room once every few games with a mild injury. Truth be told, AD is a maddeningly frustrating player. He is physically capable of dominating a game at any point, but he only seems to do so unless begged or shamed into doing it. It's almost like he needs people to criticize him before he tries hard instead of just trying hard. He doesn't have a consistent motor, and this is a big reason why he only made the playoffs two times in seven years with New Orleans. He's 28 years old and in the absolute prime of his career. He should be, at worst, the second or third best player in the NBA. But instead, he's in the lower part of the top 10, if that. If he had the same mindset as Russell Westbrook or Giannis, they would have to fold the NBA. Stephen Curry. Do you hear that? It's just another small forward walking to the podium to accept his Finals MVP award over Steph. It brings me great joy that Steph never won a Finals MVP despite making the NBA Finals five straight years at his absolute peak. This is what his toxic fan base absolutely deserves. His fans do nothing but tear down other players and his teammates to give him all the credit, which is a big reason why Kevin Durant left town. It's scarily similar to Tom Brady's Colt fan base, and you know how I feel about them. Steph is the biggest front runner in NBA history, but he's been very shaky and nowhere near his best with the game in the balance in the playoffs, particularly in the finals. Remember when he only won in 2015 because Kyrie's kneecap exploded and Cleveland's lineup consisted of LeBron and a bunch of Make-A-Wish kids? Remember when he blew a 3-1 lead in the 2016 finals before running to Kevin Durant in the Hamptons a few weeks later? Remember when he was a distant third best player in two finals behind KD and LeBron? Remember when he choked on the last shot in game six of the 2019 finals versus Toronto? Or when he scored just two points in overtime of a do or die play-in game versus Memphis last year? He still hasn't won a playoff game without Klay Thompson. Sorry, Steph fans, but he'll never be better than LeBron, no matter how badly you want him to be. Kawhi Leonard. Has any NBA superstar ever had it easier than Kawhi Leonard? He was drafted into the most ideal situation possible in San Antonio, where he didn't start producing superstar numbers until 2017. This didn't stop people from rewriting history and giving Kawhi all the credit for the Spurs winning in 2014 when he was a role player on a loaded squad. He eventually got sick of San Antonio, so he sat out with a mysterious injury and was traded to a title-ready team in Toronto, where he gets full credit for the title they won in 2019, even though we all know Toronto only won because Kevin Durant and Klay Thompson got hurt. Kawhi left again that offseason to go to the Clippers where they blew a 3-1 lead in the second round in 2020 after making commercials bragging about how LA was his city. Then last year he got hurt in the playoffs and his team still came within two games of the finals without him. Simply put, he's always been on great teams, he gets the lion's share of the credit when things go right and almost no criticism when things go wrong. Maybe it's because he's quiet so the media leaves him alone, but just because he's introverted doesn't mean he's humble. If he was drafted to the Kings instead of the Spurs, he'd just be another good player instead of a superstar. Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant moans when he wipes his ass. If you broke into Kevin Durant's house, he would ask you if he could help you break into other people's houses. Kevin Durant is the type of guy who would brag about beating a handicapped kid in a foot race. Do you get my drift? KD is a spineless pussy who ruined the NBA for several years with the most extreme act of cowardice ever displayed by a superstar athlete when he left a title caliber team in OKC to join a 73 win Warriors team he just blew a 3-1 lead to in a month prior. He never deserves to be forgiven for this and I will never let him forget about it. KD still hasn't won a legit title in what is now his 15th NBA season despite being on very good teams for essentially his entire career. He tried to build another super team in Brooklyn with Kyrie and Harden but that failed due to injuries and Kyrie being a fucking quack. It brought me immense joy to see KD lose in the second round last year because his big ass foot was on the three point line. He technically has two rings and two finals MVPs the same way OJ Simpson has technically never murdered anybody. It's somewhat tragic really. A player of KD's immense talents and gifts will never be respected because of his own insecurities and I love it. Fuck Kevin Durant. Now it's time to trigger fans of some legendary players, starting with Kobe Bryant. Kobe was a chucker who needed the best player in the league, Shaq, as his teammate to win his first three rings and an all-NBA power forward, Pau, to win his last two. He was selfish as hell and it's ironic his peak seasons from 2005 to 2007 coincided with the rare times he actually had subpar 
hard teammates who didn't bail him out with super clutch shots like Robert Ory and Derek Fisher. Unsurprisingly, those three years ended with no playoff series wins. Kobe was obviously an all-time great player, yes, but he is nowhere close to either LeBron or Michael Jordan, despite the fact that he gets consistently lumped in discussions with them, largely because he jutted his jaw after made shots and copied all of MJ's mannerisms and speech patterns. This makes him the most overrated player in NBA history. He was also either really bad to mediocre in the majority of his NBA Finals appearances. If he wasn't drafted by the Lakers, he wouldn't be considered a legend he is today. His fans are just as bad as Brady and Steph fans, a delusional cult that attacks people who tell the truth about their favorite player. Rest in peace, Kobe and Gianna Bryant. Michael Jordan. Trying to tear down a guy who won six rings, six finals MVPs, five MVPs, and has the highest scoring average in regular season and playoff history is an almost impossible task. Almost being the key word. Thankfully for you all, I'm a psychopath who enjoys poking holes in players' careers. First off, MJ's competition was disgustingly bad compared to today. His opponents were mostly plumbers and off-duty firefighters who wouldn't even make a G League roster now. This is just a fact, alright? Just like how the average players in the 1990s were better than the 1960s, the average player in the 2020s is better than the average player in the 1990s. There's also the fact that MJ played on well-built teams in his prime that were good enough to still win 55 games without him. I would not be doing my trolling duties if I didn't mention how MJ not only never won a title or a playoff series in his five years without famous cuck Scottie Pippen as a teammate, he never even had a winning season without Scotty. The GOAT couldn't lead a team to a winning record without Scotty by his side, huh? Say it ain't so, folks. I might be known as an MJ hater, but I have nothing but respect for his talents, unlike that cheating fraud bitch Tom Brady. LeBron James. We conclude with my favorite player of all time, but don't worry, I'm not biased, and nobody, not even LeBron, is safe from my wrath. The first seven years of LeBron's career were mostly wasted by an incompetent front office and bad teammates, that much is true, but it still doesn't excuse the fact that he was awful in the 2007 Finals versus the Spurs, largely bad in the 2008 playoffs versus Boston until Game 7, and flat out quit over the last three games versus Boston in 2010. But none of these moments hold a candle to the absolute disgraceful showing he had in the 2011 Finals versus Dallas, after he ran to Miami to build a super team. LeBron's 2011 Finals remain the worst choke job by a superstar in any sport ever. He played so bad and so hesitant it made me embarrassed to be a fan of his. He finally broke through to win a ring in a lockout year in 2012, then Ray Allen bailed him out during another disappointing finals performance in 2013. In 2014, he played mostly passive in a historical blowout loss versus the Spurs. In 2015, he had a legit excuse with teammate injuries, but still shot under 40% for the series. In 2016, he got lucky versus the Warriors as they choked and Kyrie hit the game-winning shot in Game 7, while LeBron went quiet in the last four minutes. In 2017, he sucked in the fourth quarter of a crucial Game 3 loss, and in 2018, he went scoring scoreless in overtime of Game 1, then hurt his team by breaking his hand after the game. He missed the playoffs in his first year in the Western Conference in 2019, and only won in 2020 because of the bubble. In 2021, with fans back in the stands, he played hesitant and lost in the first round. You can't trust him at the foul line late in close games, and it speaks volumes that his career-defining play is a block on Iguodala that didn't even seal the game. For all that LeBron has accomplished, he doesn't have any game winners in the NBA Finals like MJ had. If I had the choice between LeBron and MJ to make a shot to save my life, I would pick MJ.